comes from the book of Isaiah, the 58th chapter, verses 9 through 14. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong, and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. If you refrain from trampling the Sabbath, from pursuing your own interests on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it, not going your own ways, serving your own interests, or pursuing your own affairs, then you shall take delight in the Lord, and I will make you ride upon the heights of the earth. I will feed you with the heritage of your ancestor Jacob, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Here ends our first lesson. Our Gospel lesson is according to St. Luke, the 13th chapter, verses 10 through 17. Now Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for eighteen years. She was bent over and quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites! Does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it to water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for eighteen long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he had said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things being done by him. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Greetings, sisters and brothers in Christ. The title of our message for this weekend is from the gospel lesson you are set free on the sabbath let us pray and now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts 
Be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So this weekend, my kids' sermon is called Sabbath, and I'm going to start by asking all the children, what is Sabbath? What does Sabbath mean? And my guess is that they won't know. But do we really know what that word Sabbath means? It is um, in Hebrew, it's Shabbat, and it is introduced in Genesis, uh, the first book of the Bible, the first chapter of the first book, Genesis 1-1, where it says it has God creating all that is, and then it says, and on the seventh day, God rested from all the work God had done, and God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, made it holy. And so the word Shabbat means both seven, it's the seventh day, um, Sabado, right? Sabbath, Shabbat, Saturday, all comes from that word. But it also means rest. So let's think about what that means as the Sabbath meaning rest. Why rest? Um, we are kind of a workaholic culture. Why not just work all the time? What happens when we don't rest? I had a colleague who prided himself on the fact that he never took a day off, but when you looked at him, he looked exhausted. He struggled with depression. He struggled with obesity. He was like dragging himself around day in, day out but priding himself on never taking a day off. Well, the whole idea of Sabbath is that God wove this idea of uh, rest every seventh day into the fabric of creation because it's just not healthy not to rest. Um, and so, we might fool ourselves in thinking we can just work, work, work without resting, but true rest is, in a connected word, restorative, replenishing, renewing, rejuvenating, okay? We need rest to truly be healthy, and the word health means whole, wholeness. Okay, so for Jews, their Sabbath is the seventh day. What for us is Saturday. And for Jews, the day begins, we think of our day as beginning when we get up in the morning. Well, for Jews, the day begins not at sunrise, but at sunset. And that's why in the book of Genesis, chapter one, the story of creation, it says, and there was evening, and there was morning the first day, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day, etc. Okay, the Sabbath begins at sunset. The seventh day begins on what we would call Friday evening and is Saturday. Now, this was so important to Jews that not only were people supposed to rest on the Sabbath, but they allowed their animals to rest. Um, and they even believed that the earth itself needed to rest. And so every seven years, right, we get the word sabbatical. And they would let fields lie fallow um, in the seventh year so that the nutrients in the soil would be replenished. And the ultimate um, result would be that the fields would be more fruitful because they had rested, because they had replenished and the nutrients had been rejuvenated. So think about the lesson of that for our lives. If you think you can just go, go, go all the time and never be replenished, you're actually 
less productive, less fruitful because you're depleted. Your, your nutrients have been exhausted, okay? Some of us, um, well, I want to get to the second point, and that is the Sabbath as also um, setting this seventh day apart. Um, setting us apart as we keep Sabbath on this seventh day. So throughout history, Jews were known as this peculiar people. They stood out from all of their neighboring nations because they were known as those people who, who take a day off every week and do nothing. In fact, their enemies learned that... Um, that was a good day if you were at war against the Jews to attack them because very, very strict Jews would not even fight back on the Sabbath because that was considered a form of work, okay? And to this day, still, um, Jews hire people to go into their synagogues and turn on the lights and set things up and get things ready for their Sabbath worship because they themselves are not supposed to do any work on the Sabbath. If you're my age or older, you remember um, when we had the blue laws, when nothing was open on the Sabbath, now, you say, well, wait a minute, is the Sabbath Saturday or Sunday? So for Jews, it was the seventh day, uh, Saturday. We Christians changed it to Sunday. And why is that? Because for us, Christ's resurrection, the greatest event of our faith, happened on the first day of, week, of the week, Sunday. So Christians changed the day of our Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. Um, so when I was a kid growing up, nothing was open on Sunday. None of the stores were open. Um, families truly rested and rejuvenated and replenished. And sometimes I miss that aspect from our culture today. You know, um, Many young people say how impressed they are with uh, people who practice Islam because they say, you know, look at all these athletes who take their faith so seriously that they fast, even though they have like some big game or big championship or playoff, um, they fast during Ramadan and, you know, but those of us who are older Christians remember when we took our faith seriously also and, and were very strict about not working, not doing anything on the Sabbath, really honoring the Sabbath. I remember um, the film Chariots of Fire is about an Olympic runner, Eric Liddell, who refused to race refused to run because it was the sabbath and that's what that whole film chariots of fire is based on so often when people ask me if i can attend an event i will say oh i can't i have to work and they say oh okay we are such a work focused culture that that's a great excuse for not participating in something but i was thinking about it wouldn't it be awesome if we started saying, oh, I can't come, I'm so sorry, it's the Sabbath. It's a day of rest. I'm going to just focus on replenishing, restoring, rejuvenating. Well, given this whole history of what Sabbath means, now we can understand our first reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, the 58th chapter. The prophet says, if you refrain from trampling the Sabbath, from pursuing your own interests on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight 
and the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it, not going your own ways, serving your own interests or pursuing your own affairs, then you shall take delight in the Lord. And I will make you ride upon the heights of the earth. I will feed you with the heritage of your ancestor Jacob, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. I truly do wish we would return to a Sabbath practice, a day of Sabbath rest and renewal. Given that whole history and how important the Sabbath is to our Jewish brothers and sisters, I think helps us to understand more why it was so shocking how Jesus, a Jewish teacher, a rabbi, was constantly breaking the Sabbath. And that's the context that we have to look at that. So in a sense, we can understand why other Jews, why the Jewish leaders got upset with him. Why is this Jewish rabbi constantly breaking the Sabbath? Like in today's gospel, there are six days you can come and be cured. Don't do it on the Sabbath. That's considered work. You know, take a rest on the Sabbath. Okay, but Jesus challenges that, challenges that Sabbath. And Jesus is quoted as saying, um, the Sabbath was made for man, for humanity, not humanity for the Sabbath. And Jesus, if you will, is coming out of... Um, also as a Jew coming out of that history where even though historically the Jews took the Sabbath extremely important, there were exceptions to the Sabbath. And one of the biggest exceptions is that those who served in the temple, the priests, those who were responsible for worship, um, were exempt from keeping this Sabbath as a day of rest because obviously the priests had to work. Ask any clergy person, and I'll tell you, that's why we all take Monday off because we don't get to rest on the Sabbath. That's our biggest day of the week. Um, so Jesus is maybe saying, Something bigger is going on here. And um, the Sabbath was given to humanity to worship God, to glorify God. And so just as there are exemptions for those who serve God in the temple, uh, leading worship and preparing worship so those who serve God in other ways perhaps are also exempt. And let's look, uh, it's kind of similar to what the prophet Isaiah, who Jesus was constantly quoting, said in today's first reading. And remember, this passage is about the Sabbath. If you remove the yoke, the oppressive burden from among you, if you remove the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden. Think how people living in the desert would hear that. You shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt you shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. 
So it's saying the real way to live Sabbath is to remove burdens from those who are oppressed. It's to feed the hungry. It's to satisfy the needs of the afflicted. That is truly what keeping Sabbath is all about, to do justice right, is to really live the Sabbath. And so that takes us full circle to today's gospel, where Jesus is in the temple teaching, worshiping God, and sees a woman who is bent over, having been suffering from this illness that kept her bent over for 18 years years. And we're not told that in many cases, the, the ill person, the, pers the blind person, the person who cannot walk, etc., cries out to Jesus. But what I think is so beautiful about this story is the woman never says anything. She might, she probably doesn't even see Jesus. She's completely bent over. Jesus sees her and he sees her oppressive condition. He sees that yoke, that burden that's weighing heavily on her and oppressing her. And Jesus goes over to her and says, woman, you are set free, knowing darn well that he was doing this on the Sabbath. He then laid hands on her and she stood up straight and began praising God, which is what the whole Sabbath is about. So for just a minute, I want you to, whether you're sitting or standing, I want you to bend completely over. Bend at the waist. Bend like if I did it, you wouldn't see me, okay, because I'm sitting in a chair. And from that completely bent over position, what is your perspective? What do you see? Not much. You see the, the ground. You see your feet. You don't see the sky. You don't see the sunlight. You don't see the trees. You don't see the birds. You don't see the faces of the people you love. Think how oppressive that must be. Think of the yoke of this woman's burden and think of her living that way for 18 long years. And now think of Jesus noticing, noticing her burden, noticing that yoke of oppression weighing heavily on her and Jesus reaching out to her. She didn't call Jesus, Jesus called her. And so today, you might be feeling bent over, um, weighed down like a heavy yoke is upon you, and it might be the yoke of illness, as it was for this woman, but it might be the yoke of addiction. It might be the yoke of exhaustion. It might be the yoke of of mental illness, depression, like my colleague who was so overworked. It might be the burden of broken relationships with people you love. It might be the burden of fear and, uh, and, and financial hardship. And there are many, many things that weigh heavily upon us, sisters and brothers. But today, the message of this gospel is that before we can even call out to Jesus, Jesus sees us. Jesus knows our affliction. He sees that yoke of oppression weighing heavily on us. And this day, this Sabbath day, he wants to lift that yoke from your shoulders. And he says to you this day, 
you are set free on the Sabbath because the purpose of the Sabbath is that we worship God. And when this woman could stand up straight, when she could stand upright, she was able to fulfill the real meaning of the Sabbath and worship God. You know, there's also a little wordplay going on in the Greek because Jesus then is criticized, right, by the synagogue leader. Oh, stop, you know, here that Jesus guy is again, breaking the Sabbath. There's six days on which you can be healed. Come on those days and not on the Sabbath, right? He's one of those real sticklers for all the rules. And Jesus didn't say again, you know, the Sabbath was made for humanity, not humanity for the Sabbath. But Jesus did say, wait a minute. Who of you who has an animal doesn't untie it, even though it's the Sabbath, so it can go out and get a drink? And the word in Greek really means unbind it, release it from its tie, from its bind. And then it says the same word, should not this woman, this daughter of Abraham, who has been tied up, bound, bound for 18 long years, shouldn't she also be unbound, be released, be set free on the Sabbath? Isn't that the true meaning of the Sabbath, right? to lift that yoke of the oppressed, to feed the hungry, to set people free. So sisters and brothers, the good news of the gospel is that today Jesus sees you. Jesus reaches out to you and says, this day you are set free. And then we who have been set free, are to go forth and notice, just as Jesus noticed the yoke, the burden on this woman, we are to have those, those Christ-like eyes that see the burdens that others are carrying and to announce also to them that good news, you too are set free. In Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now may God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May God look upon us with blessing and grant us peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve God and the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.